Hello and welcome back to BioClass Bites. In this video, we are going to talk about organelles of a typical cell. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like and share this video. These are the unit and lesson titles for this video playlist, but in this video, we are going to focus on organelles of a typical cell. In cell biology, we define organelle as a specialized subunit within a cell that has a specific function. If you could still remember our lesson on levels of organization, right after molecules, the next level is organelle, and that's, that, that is actually what an organelle is. These are made up of molecules um, that, that, assembles them, that assemble themselves, and they are found inside the cell, and they perform a specific function. Individual organelles are usually separately enclosed with their own lipid bilayers. So they are membrane-bound, membrane-enclosed structures. The name organelle comes from the idea that these, that these structures are, are to cells are what an organ is to the body. So they are similar organs. They, they act as organs within the cell. Hence, they are called organ, then L meaning small or diminutive. So they are identified by microscopy and they can also be purified by cell fractionation. So there are many types of organelles, especially, especially in eukaryotic cells. While prokaryotes do not possess organelles, if you still remember our video on prokaryotes versus um, eukaryotes, prokaryotes do not have organelles, but they still have protein-based microcompartments, which are said to be the ancestors of our present modern-day organelles. I recommend that you watch this video entitled Cell Structure and Function. I will provide the link in the description below. Now, this is a diagram of a typical animal cell. Okay? So, you can see here it's being protected by its plasma membrane or cell membrane. Um, it encloses the cell and separates it from its environment. So, you also can find the nucleus, usually the largest organelle, uh, and then you can which is protect, protected by its own nuclear envelope, okay? The nucleolus, um, uh, a non-membranous structure involved in production of ribosomes, and chromatin, this is the uh, material consisting of the DNA, the genetic material of the cell, and the proteins, okay? So this is visible during cell division. Now, everything between uh, the nucleus and the cell membrane is your cytoplasm. Okay, so you can find the following organelles uh, there. So right after the nucleus, you, you can see it surrounded by the endoplasmic reticulum. Okay, so this is where um, protein synthesis takes place, okay, and other synthetic metabolic processes. So the ones that are dotted, the ones that are dotted with ribosomes, okay, uh, ribosomes, small uh, brown dots here, these are complex uh, sites of photos uh, of um, protein synthesis so that's the rough endoplasmic reticulum then you also have a smooth endoplasmic reticulum uh, that is not dotted with uh, ribosomes then you can also find the golgi apparatus this is an organelle for um, active synthesis sorting and packaging of materials and then of course we we cannot forget about it the mitochondrion Okay, so the mitochondrion is the site of cellular respiration, okay? So where food is broken down into um, ATP, okay, so that the cells can use it as its form of energy. So other, um, other uh, organelles, you have the peroxisome, okay? An organelle for um, specialized metabolic processes. Then you have your... Um, Microvilli for the projection. Some some uh, animal cells have this. Lysosome, a digestive organelle for uh, where molecule macromolecules are hydrolyzed. Then uh, some animal cells have a flagellum for locomotion. Now this is the a diagram of a typical plant cell. Okay, so it also has the majority of the organelles. Okay, that we've seen here, but I, I hope you recognize here the central vacuole. This one is a very prominent organelle in plant cells for uh, storage, okay? Sometimes water, sometimes food for storage purposes. And then, of course, chloroplasts, okay? Chloroplasts here. These are organelles um, that are in charge with photosynthesis, okay? So this is where photosynthesis occurs. 
And then aside, then the rest of the organelles are the same, no? Even mitochondrion, we can find that in plant cells, okay, for energy um, production um, or breaking down of food to harvest energy. But then another feature in plant cells that are not found in animal cells would be the presence of, aside from the cell membrane, another cell wall, okay? So cell membrane, the thin layer here, but then the thicker cell wall, okay? It's an outer layer that maintains the shape of the plant cell, and it's usually made up of cellulose. Now, again, also to clarify what are the difference, uh, differences between plants and animal cells. So in terms of um, presence or absence of cell wall, uh, presence or absence of chloroplast, size of vacuole, and number of mitochondria. So in plant cells, they have cell wall, um, animal cells do not have cell wall. Um, plant cells have chloroplast. Some animal cells okay, could also have um, chloroplast. The ha plant cells have bigger vacuole for storage, water, and food. The uh, animals have animal cells have smaller vacuole, and um, plant cells have less mitochondria, and animal cells have more mitochondria. I also recommend that you visit this tutorial page from Khan Academy on cellular organelles and structure. I'll provide the link in the description below. So this is a table that shows us the cell component, structure, and function. Okay, so the nucleus again is surrounded by a nuclear envelope. Okay, it's double membrane, and uh, the main function is to protect the chromosomes or the genetic materials of the cell. Uh, the ribosome is a two subunit uh, structure and its task is for protein synthesis. Endoplasmic reticulum right outside the uh, nucleus um, um, is a site for um, synthesis. Okay, uh, so this, the rough endoplasmic reticulum you see here dotted with ribosomes is for um, aids in synthesis of secretory and other proteins. Okay, so mostly for protein synthesis, while the smooth endoplasmic reticulum not dotted with um, ribosomes is for lip synthesis of lipids and metabolism of carbohydrates. The Golgi apparatus is for packaging of materials and sorting of materials. Lysosomes is for breaking down of ingested substances and vacuole uh, for storage and um, digestion. Now, mitochondrion is the site for cellular respiration. Okay, and uh, the chloroplast is the site for photosynthesis. Uh, peroxisomes, um, they, are, they are specialized metabolic compartment that contains enzymes that transfer hydrogen atoms uh, from substrates to oxygen to produce um, hydrogen peroxide, which is converted to uh, water, okay, H2O. So this is how we visualize the organelles. So, um, so we have here a table. Uh, the, the first column uh, gives us the name of the organelle, their function, and then what is their factory counterpart. So if we visualize the cell as a factory, what are the parts of that factory in, in accordance to the organelle being discussed? So what's their factory counterpart? For example, the nucleus is uh, an, the largest organelle. Um, it's while it is considered as a major part of a typical cell, it is still an organelle. Um, so the function of that is to store DNA. So in a factory, the nucleus is the room where the blueprints of the factory is kept. So that, that's a very important room because this is where the plants of the factory and the processes of the factory are kept. Same with the nucleus, this is where the DNA, the genetic material is kept and stored. The mitochondrion is in charge for energy production. So in a factory, that's the power plant. So the, um, the mitochondrion is in charge in har harnessing or harvesting energy uh, for the cellular processes. Next will be the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Um, this is important for lip lipid production or detox detoxification of the cell. So for example, in a factory, this is important. The counterpart is for accessory production, decorations, and all that. The rough endoplasmic reticulum, or, or RER, is important in protein production. So smooth lipid production, rough protein production. 
uh, in particular for export out of the cell. So this is uh, so in a factory, this is the primary production line. It makes the toys of the factory. The Golgi apparatus is for protein modification and export. So this is uh, in a factory, this is the shipping department. So this is the one that ships out and the, that boxes up and then ships out the, the materials. Peroxisome is for lipid destruction. So um, in the factory, this is the security and waste removal department. Okay, they contain oxidative enzymes that breaks down particles. Lysosome is for protein uh, destruction. This is for recycling and security of the factory. So these are the major typical organ, a uh, major uh, organs of a typical cell. These are their products, the, their function, and this is their counterpart in a factory, for example. Then um, this one is actually an interactive website from cellsalive.com. You can actually choose which cell you want to explore, and then if you click on the organelles, it will tell you more about that organelle. So you go to this website; it is highly recommended. This one is also from Khan Academy. Now they're focusing on eukaryotic cell structures. I will provide the links to the websites and to the videos in the description below. And these are actually very good videos from Amoeba Sisters. So I recommend that you watch this video um, about bacteria. I will provide the link in the description below. And this one about protists and fungi, still in the description below. So watch these two videos, very informative, um, highly recommended. So let's try this pop quiz. So um, I will read the question and then I will read the statement and then let's try to determine if it is true or false. So the cell is the basic structural and functional unit of all known living organisms. True. All known living things are made up of cells. True. The word cell comes from this Latin cellula, meaning a small room. That's true. Rudolf Ludwig Virchow concluded that all cells come from pre-existing cells. That's true. And all cells are basically the same in chemical composition. That's true. Now let's try to identify what's being described in, the, um, in this part here. So it is a type of cell that has a primitive form of nucleus. We call that prokaryote. This was the term Leuvenhoek gave to the small animals he saw under his microscope. He called it animalcules. It is an instrument to see objects too tiny for the naked eye. We call it the microscope. This is the part that holds two or more objective lenses and can be rotated to easily change power, revolving nose piece, and it connects the eyepiece to the objective lens, body tube. We will learn more about microscopes um, and its parts and functions in the next video, microscopy. It is the biological membrane separating the interior of the cell from the outside environment. We call that cell membrane. It is a translucent fluid in which the other cytoplasmic elements are suspended. We call that the cytosol. Also sometimes referred to as the control center, it is a membrane enclosed organelle found in eukaryotic cells. We call it the nucleus. It is a discrete densely stained structure found in the nucleus, nucleolus. They are membrane bound or compartments within the cell that have specific functions, organelles. Um, for your reflective journal log, I recommend that you watch this video, Printing a Human Kidney from TED Ed. I will provide the link in the description below. That ends our video. I hope you learned something new. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like and share this video. Till next time, goodbye!